hello and welcome back um, in this video we are moving on to symbolic computation but before that we're going to cover um, storing structured data first uh, which will be useful um, for symbolic computation or anything else yeah, as a matter of fact so let's get started it's kind of like a numpy extension really um, so uh, the numpy arrays we have seen so far uh, store quite simple data types like integers floats and strings um, but what if uh, in an array we want to store the whole data record for example uh, you might have like a student records uh, with their names and um, uh, what else like grades uh, etc uh, stored as like a tuples and then this is uh, stored inside an array right so we can have like a mixed data types and then we want to use uh, this uh, mixed data type records uh, when we want to do some computation for example find the average uh, of the grades that are stored with these uh, student records so <clears throat> uh, in this example we're going to be using some personal records uh, which contains the name age and height okay um, so how can we store these well in normal python what we did was um, create a tuple containing these items and possibly we will store it inside a list or maybe even a dictionary right so uh, maybe uh, some unique id can be used so if we assume name is unique id we can use that as the key and so forth but um, regardless uh, the python data structure uh, if we want to do some computation on top of this uh, it's going to be quite uh, cumbersome to do so but uh, numpy allows us to store these and interact with them uh, in easier way so let's have a look how we can do that firstly a possible option is to store each data separately like this uh, name equals mp.array and then we have a bunch of strings uh, age and another string and then height and so forth uh, if we do this we could potentially access um, the records that are relevant to each person by understanding the index however um, if we do make some mistake somewhere in the code uh, it's going to get quite messy and uh, if especially if the record gets larger it we may not be able to tell whether it's true or not right so it could become out of sync and um, managing uh, separate records, uh, separate arrays for the single records that we want to keep uh, is not an efficient way to do so, right? So we can do probably better than this, right? So that's where a structured arrays in uh, NumPy comes in handy. So instead of saying that we want an array of ints, uh, which what we did in the previous few videos uh, we can tell numpy that instead we want an array of records uh, each one consisting of say a string an integer and a float okay so what we can say is all right store these three type of records and we will specify what those data types are and then it can store a bunch of them together okay uh, so we do have to specify type for those arrays um, even when we create an array consisting of simple types uh, we have seen before it shows us uh, through the d type uh, attribute saying what they contain so if you don't provide what the d type is then it's going to automatically assign one for us so if we look at it oops so here uh, that's not what we're going to use but this one is what we're going to use Okay, so run it so we have array one there. array one okay uh, it's converting everything into float numbers so uh, before that what we had was array one equals um, some mp array and what it did was if we don't specify the d type uh, array one dot d type it automatically converts it for us so it thinks that the most suitable one is integer 32 so it stores that but by specifying the d type equals float then it will use the d type specified to store these um, 
if you do provide um, some numbers, for example, uh, let's say 1.1, 1 .1, uh, and then we convert it to int, int, okay, then it will convert uh, numbers into integers, okay. So this is quite handy because it will try to do the conversion for us, uh, but you do have to be careful that it can be converted. Um, uh, for example, I pass in, say, alphabet T, then it's going to complain that it will try to convert the character T into an integer, but it failed to do so, right? But uh, if we do pass in, say, a number inside that string, for example, 7, then it's, it has succeeded uh, changing that string into an integer type, so uh, it's, it's not complaining about it. It will um, happily store that for us. So that's the second example here. So if I have a bunch of uh, numbers, uh, which is a string, uh, but I, uh, I specify the D type to be float, then it will automatically convert these numbers into type uh, float. Um, but we do have to be careful that, um, for example, like this, we may think that this might convert into number 7.6 first and then convert into integer, which removes the decimal point, so it store 7, but it doesn't do multi-step conversion. So if you try to convert string 7.6 into an integer, uh, it's the same error that you'll get in Python. So do worry about uh, such conversions. It doesn't do double steps for you. It will only try to do single step. So that's a, a one thing about specifying D-type, and this is going to be useful when we have a bunch of different records of different types. Okay. So now we can specify the structured types for arrays. So to create a structured array, uh, we'll specify that the D-type should instead be a record uh, made up of multiple fields. So before, what we did was uh, specify the d-type for all numbers, but since we're going to have records, we're going to specify multiple d-types. Okay? So for instance, uh, for the collection of people that we had before, an ideal d-types uh, might be uh, strings, integers, and then floats. Right? So to do this, uh, we have a couple of steps. First, our data are uh, using one tuple for each person, so we're going to use the tuple, uh, similar to the Python style. And secondly, we're going to have a D type specified for each field. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at the code. So this is what it looks like. So what it's doing is each tuple contains the record for each person. So Alice, age 25, is 158.2 centimeters tall, and so forth. And this D type is now not a single value, but instead now a list. And inside each list, we have tuples specifying um, the name of the record. So name is going to reference the first column of the record. Uh, age is our second column. Height is our third column. So uh, the D type will go by the columns. And here, uh, U10 is specifying that this is going to be Unicode. right? And 10 uh, means the value after the um, type uh, means the number of characters. So it thinks uh, what we're saying is uh, we will probably have up to 10 characters max. Okay, uh, age is going to be integer and height is going to be float. Okay, so we have it. Uh, uh, here, so we already have people loaded uh, down here. So if we check people, um, it shows us that we contain these tuples uh, as our record. Uh, it also has D type, name, age, and height. So you can see that although we have specified int and float here, it has converted to I4 and F8. And D type has specific characters used for different types. So for instance, I is for integer, uh, F is for floats. So you can see that i4 represents int32 int type, and as I said before, this will depending this will depend on the OS uh, that you are using. So f8 will be referencing a float of as um, float 64. Okay, so 64 bits. We can always change this. So for instance, um, let's bring this in here. Okay, instead of saying int, 
uh, we can change this to say numpy.int and if you go there it provides a few different options so int 0 in 16 32 64 so if you select int 64 and uh, look at people so now it has changed to i8 okay f8 and i8 so we can always specify uh, more accurately what the data type at that particular field will be represented by right um, some people might be asking about these tiny uh, characters i do have a slide for that next slide which is uh, a little indian this is um, based on how the characters are read from left to right or right to left however this is not part of this unit so you don't really have to worry about it okay so here the u indicates that this is a, a unicode uh, of uh, length 10 characters okay so this is what we observe once we print it out and we as the as same as um, list containing a bunch of tuples we can access individual tuples using the index as before so people at index 0 is going to give us our first item which contains Alice's record okay and we can all do this uh, for other people as well um, and we can possibly update um, our record that is uh, already there for example I want to change index 1 uh, with another person I can do that then if we look at people again then um, Alice is gone and instead we have Anthea inside okay so update all those uh, slicing whatever uh, works the same as how we covered about the numpy, numpy stuff before okay so the next question is how do we access uh, the specific uh, type that we have designated uh, if we are using uh, the python list with tuples inside this is going to be uh, some complex uh, the loops to deal with it however uh, numpy allows us to specify the names so what we can do is firstly uh, let's go here first so what we can do is we can specify the names uh, name that has been uh, used to define each column so for instance if I want all the names I can pass in name into our uh, field uh, of um, indexing so if I go name it's kind of like uh, using dictionary um, so if we do that what it's going to do is return uh, an array containing uh, only the name fields from each uh, record okay so you can do the same with um, age and height as well and of course it's going to tell us exactly what um, the d type is uh, using these records so you can see that by accessing um, the records using its name we can easily retrieve uh, the numpy arrays that contain specific numbers so now we can easily do something like um, mp dot sum what is the sum of everybody's age people of age we can do something like this and then it's going to be 131 so you can do all the operations that we have learned before about the numpy functions and operators um, and we can still store it in a structured format okay and, and this is just uh, trying to access uh, individual records and also you can update a specific field of of the record as well Okay. so this is slightly different to normal python tuple where you can't really change the content but in numpy uh, you are able to update the record as well okay so as mentioned before now that we can uh, retrieve um, the information uh, specific to different columns now we can do some filtered structured arrays as well so for instance i want to find the record of everybody where their age meets certain limit so this is um, uh, the example but let me bring in uh, the, the original people data again um, so we can do um, people of index uh, where np dot where people uh, of age 
okay, is less than 40. Okay, so what I'm doing is uh, giving a query. So this np where remember, it returns us the index, right? A bunch of indices. Uh, and what we're trying to do is people of age is going to return us an array which contains only the age fields. So what it's going to do is now find those age fields that are less than 40 and return those index uh, indices of the people. So if I do that, it's going to give us all the records where people's age are less than 40. Okay, So it does return us uh, three records, Ellis, Kathy, and Doug. So we are missing Bob here, whose age requirement didn't meet our condition here. Okay, so hopefully now um, this will provide us a better way of handling structured data in addition to our simple uh, single dimension of, uh, or two dimensional matrices that we were uh, looking before. I think it's a good time to finish here. Bye.